Think you're an expert at using Desmos? Think again. While Desmos has opened up a lot of possibilities for solving problems on the SAT, the College Board has been hard at work writing problems that make the use of Desmos more challenging. If you really want to outsmart them, you'll want to know how to utilize this graphing calculator to its fullest. In this video, we'll be going over some of the more advanced Desmos capabilities that the vast majority of students are completely unaware of. Before we dive into the more sophisticated features Desmos has to offer, make sure you watch our first video that covers all the basics. Check out the link in the description below. If you want to practice alongside this video, remember you can go to desmos.com practice on a separate window and select the SAT under Assessments. While we've gone over many kinds of problems that mostly involve solving for one unknown variable, a lot of the harder SAT questions involve multiple unknown constants or variables. In this example, we have a system of nonlinear equations with only one solution, but we don't know either B or C. And rather than being asked for a specific value for either, we're asked to find their difference. While we could certainly solve this by hand, by setting the equations equal to one another and working out the algebra, it's much faster just to graph both equations. Since we don't know B or C, let's add sliders for both, and then on the line below that, we'll enter C minus B to keep track of their difference. Any intersection represents a solution, and we only want one solution, which means they can only touch at one point, where the line is tangent to the curve. Just by tweaking the values for either, we can see the only time the line is tangent to the curve is when c minus b is equal to 4. To double check this, in the place of the slider for c, we can instead set c equal to b plus 4. Now just manipulate the slider for b, and we can see that regardless of what b is, the line is always going to be tangent when c is 4 larger. So c minus b must be equal to 4. By the way, you can also press that play button next to the slider to animate it. Click on the arrows beneath the play button to modify the animation, to speed it up, to slow it down, or to change it from going back and forth to going just in one direction, playing once, or increasing indefinitely. This may be useful if the question asks for a more general statement about a constant, like an inequality instead of a specific value. In this next question, we're given a function with two unknown constants, and all we're told is that it passes through the point negative 24, 0 and that the value of the function is negative when x is positive 24. If you're confident enough with irrational expressions, you might be able to work it out on paper with some inequalities. But we can also just plug it into Desmos, adding in sliders for a and b. By playing around with the value of a and b with the sliders, we can quickly get an idea of how they influence the shape of the graph. We can see that the value of the function when x is positive 24 is only going to be negative if a is negative. On the other hand, if b is negative, the function is never even going to be defined when x is negative 24. The only way to stretch it over to cross negative 24, 0 is by making b positive. Since the first two options we're given aren't guaranteed, the only option here that must be true is d, since a positive number like b will always be greater than a negative number like a. Here we have a more complicated system of nonlinear equations with some unknown constants, which are in turn related to a third unknown constant that we're supposed to find the value of. Questions like this with so many unknowns might be intimidating at first, but let's start just trying to plot things in Desmos, starting with our system of equations and adding in sliders for h and k. We can see from the graph that we're dealing with two circles. If there is only one solution to the system, that means there is only one intersection point. So the circles must be tangent to one another. Careful manipulation of h and k on the sliders could help us find values for those constants where the circles would be tangent. Since we're actually interested in finding the corresponding value for m, we can just enter that last expression on the next line, but replacing our equal sign with the tilde key so that it solves for m. If we get our circles as close to tangent as possible, we can see our m must be about 72. To check, let's get rid of the slider for k and instead add a slider for m. This way we are inputting what we want for m and then using that to specify exactly what k needs to be for the circles to be tangent. By setting m equal to 72, we can see that our circles are indeed tangent regardless of what we set h to now, so long as h isn't too large or small. So 72 must indeed be our solution. In this next problem, the only information we're given about these two perpendicular lines is the y-intercept of line j and a point that line k crosses. 
While we're not given the slope of either line, since they're perpendicular, we know that the slope of one will be the negative reciprocal of the other. Go ahead and see if you can figure out this problem on your own by setting up equations for our two lines in Desmos using a slider for the slope of line j. Feel free to pause the video here and work out which of the listed order pairs is a possible intersection point. First, since we have the y-intercept for j, let's set up the equation in slope-intercept form. Let's set the slope of line j to the letter m and add a slider. Since we have just a point for the other line, let's set up the equation for line k in point-slope form, using the negative reciprocal of m for its slope. You can also plot the four listed points like we have here if you want help spotting which one is the correct one. With all this setup, just drag or play the slider. The only point it goes through is negative 4, 6. So the correct choice must be option B. Whenever we use the tilde key in Desmos to help solve for an unknown in an equation, it's actually doing a process in the background called regression to quickly generate a model with a solution that best fits the equation. That being said, if there's more than one unknown, it doesn't have enough information to create the model unless we constrain what the extra unknowns are elsewhere with sliders like we did earlier. Let's say we have a problem where we're being asked to use a pair of coordinates to identify a line with slope m and y-intercept b that passes through both points. But what we're specifically being asked for isn't m or b, but the value of some expression involving both. Now while we could try calculating the slope and intercept manually, problems like these that involve fractions can be rather time consuming, and we also run the risk of making a mistake with our arithmetic. Instead, we can actually do a regression like we have done before, but instead of just plugging in one coordinate and using a slider, we'll create a table of values. To create a table, simply type the keyword table into an input box by itself and it'll automatically create an xy table that we can modify. Let's plug in our x-coordinates into the left column and the corresponding y-coordinates into the right column. On the next input box below the table, enter the equation of the line as we're given it in slope-intercept form. But let's replace the equal sign with our tilde key and add a subscript to x and y to match the top of our table. This will immediately solve for both m and b simultaneously, and then we can literally just copy down the expression they have here, and it will give us our solution, 28. This works for way more than just lines, though. We can use this type of regression for many other types of equations. Let's say we're given three points in the equation of a parabola, but all the coefficients are unknown, and we have to find their sum. All we have to do here is enter the points into the table, set up a regression matching the equation they gave us here, using the correct subscripts and the tilde key, and Desmos instantly provides us with the values of all three coefficients, and we can find their sum on their next line. Now let's try a slightly harder version of the previous problem. In this problem, we're given a quadratic function, where our coefficients are unknown, but all we have this time is two points the function passes through, and the fact that a is some integer greater than one. Let's pause the video here and see if you can try this one out for yourself. Okay, let's set up our table again with our two coordinates, then enter our regression below that. Again, let's replace the equal sign with a tilde key and make sure that our x and y match the top of the table. Now at first, it's going to suggest that all of our coefficients should be zero, but that's because two points isn't enough information for it to come up with a more specific answer for a quadratic. So let's instead set a equal to 2 on the next line since we're told that it's an integer greater than 1. We're being asked to find a plus b, so we'll enter that below the slider. This is already showing us one of the solutions, but to be sure, we can increase the value of a on our slider, and a plus b is only going to get more negative, so we know that it must be that first option, negative 6. We can also create a table to quickly calculate multiple values for a function all at once. In this problem, we're being asked to identify the correct table of values for a given transformation of function f. Rather than plug in each x value one at a time, let's do it all at once. First, let's enter the expression for our original function. Then we can create a table. And on the top line, change x1 to x and y1 to 2f of x minus 5. If you wanted to, you could also have defined g of x on a separate input box and then enter g of x here. It'll get you the same thing either way. Now we just have to plug in our x values. Once we have our table all put together, let's just compare it to our answer options. 
While the tables are similar, we can quickly see that option B is the only complete match. This next problem involves an exponential expression instead, with two unknown constants. See if you can make a table using the information given to perform a regression. Feel free to pause the video here to take a moment to read the problem and try to figure out a solution on your own just using Desmos. Let's start by creating our table of values. To make our equation match a bit better, we can use t and n at the top instead of x1 and y1. The two times we'll put in is 25, since the watch was made 25 years ago, and 13 in the second row, since that's how old the watch was 12 years ago. We're told that the brightness of the watch follows the same relationship as the amount of tritium left in the watch, so we can use the corresponding brightness values in the right column for n. Below our table, let's set up our regression, copying down the equation and replacing the equal sign with a tilde just like before. We can leave n and t in as is, matching the table. And there we go! We immediately have our answer for the half-life t0 as 12.3 years if we ran to the nearest tenth. While it's certainly important to have a good understanding of how to do the math on your own for all these problems, when it comes to how competitive the SAT is, you need every advantage that you can get. And as you've seen so far, Desmos can do a lot of the work for us in less time and with less mistakes. Now that you've seen all the ins and outs of Desmos, it's time to start putting it into practice. If you'd like to book a remote or in-person session with one of our specialized SAT tutors, feel free to reach out to us at our website, principiatutors.com, or email us at info at principiatutors.com. Links are in the description below. That's all for now. Good luck on your test! Thank you.